Okay, I admit it, I was wrong. And I can prove it with this and this muffin. Maybe. In my defence, I just couldn't get my head around how the new, locked out, static versions of these FTB star brakes on awesome reels like the Dark Wolf Ultra and the Black Knight 2 seem to cast just as well as my original Dark Wolf Ultra with the dynamic FTB star brakes. Unless my reels had had static brakes all along. This would be pretty amazing given that I can flip cast a 1g trout magnet with my original dynamic style Dark Wolf Ultra, particularly with the magnet upgrade and the Roro bearing. Now for my apology. In some previous myth busting around right hand versus left hand CDM reels, my reply to people saying that the lefties never worked as well was that, well there's nothing in the physics that suggests that magnetic induction changes depending on the rotation of the spool. And while that's basically true, I'm still completely wrong about there being no difference between left and right hand FTB style systems. To find out why, we need to know how a real FTB brake works. Here we have the greeny blue brake shoe mounted inside the spool. There's a spring at the free end of the shoe and a fixed point pivot at the other end. And of course the magnets that create the braking effect. And although the aluminium spool is not magnetic, it acts as an inductor when it's moving. So let's look at just one of the magnets. Here it is sitting below the spool. And that spool is a cylindrical sheet of metal rotating in this direction which means it is moving through the magnetic field put out by the magnet. And at the leading edge of the magnet, this induces a clockwise electrical eddy current, while at the trailing edge of the magnet, counterclockwise eddy currents are induced. And reliably informed, Lenz's law states that these currents create a downward north pole magnetic field at the leading edge, and a downward south pole at the trailing edge. Notice how there's an equal and opposite north-south polarity. There's no attraction force pulling the brake shoes up towards the spool. I frustratingly proved that to myself by dangling banks of neodymium magnets next to rotating spools. I could not get the moving spool to attract the magnets at all. Instead of an up-down attraction, magnetic eddy brakes work by creating resistance to the side-to-side -side motion with matching polarities repelling each other at the leading edge and opposite polarities pulling sideways on each other at the trailing edge. So it's hard for the spool to push into the matching polarity at the leading edge and at the same time it's been dragged back by the trailing edge leaving that opposite polarity behind. The faster the spool spins the stronger this induced effect is and so even static magnetic brakes are dynamic to some degree. If there's no magnetism pulling the brakes towards the spool, how do dynamic brakes work? Well, it's all to do with the pivot point and that sideways drag force. Pulling the magnet sideways away from the free end and towards the pivot creates a rotational force. And that's what pushes the free end of the brake shoe closer to the spool and squashes the spring. It only works because the pivot point is below the magnets. So if your pivot point is here and the magnets are at the top, Lateral force this way will cause rotation. What happens if you reverse the spool direction? Well, the drag force is reversed and so is the direction of rotation, pushing the free end away from the spool, at least until blocked by a piece of plastic. Now all that's very nice, but I couldn't see any of that happening inside my reels. So what I needed was a transparent brake housing. Oh, and in case you're wondering how to work out the polarity of unlabeled magnets, you just need a compass. But where could I get that transparent material? Perhaps a little snack will inspire my brain. It's not like the answer's hiding in plain sight, after all. Wait a minute, I could use the empty carton. Wait a minute, I could use the empty carton. Let's MacGyver the f*** out of this thing. Thanks to some whittling skills and a GH100 reel donating its organs to science, behold, a crappy but see-through brake housing. Let's spin her up. Houston, we have liftoff. 
Check out the slow motion replay. As the spool accelerates, out goes the free end of the brake shoe. Next let's reverse the spool and hey presto, the brake shoe says nah, this is bullshit, I'm off. The problem is, unless you do what the engineers at Shimano did with the original design and make a mirror image brake for left hand reels, then the pivot point's always going to be at the wrong end for it to work in a left hand wind reel. Now I will say, I still love the casting performance of the Dark Wolf Ultra Reel in the Black Knight 2, and you can see evidence of that in the video that I'll post up here. And at the same time it makes perfect sense that the static braked new versions of these reels work just as well as the left hand wind versions that were dynamically braked. It also shows how smart those engineers at Shimano were when they first designed the FTB system from the ground up.